Welcome back. I am the Loud Little Ducky. Today we are continuing on with our case review, part four of the entire case, but part three and the final part in the motion for summary judgment uh, in the Owens versus Lone Cactus Construction, or known as today as Lone Cactus Fencing and Welding. And so let's dive in. So continuing on in the motion, plaintiff was also unaware that the defendant was not a licensed contractor while advertising to her and the public that he was in the fall of 2020. He did not get licensed by the ROC until February 12th, 2021. See Exhibit 91. Okay, but hear me out. When she hired him, he wasn't. Okay, that is true. By the time he started the work, he was licensed. So he didn't technically do any work on her project until after he had his license. Maybe he knew his license was coming or he was fixing to take the test for it or whatever it may be, but we're gonna call it that way. Uh, and you shouldn't be saying you're licensed if you are not licensed. That is actually misrepresenting yourself and uh, against the law. So don't do that. Don't say you're licensed to do something if you're not. And if it requires a license, maybe don't be doing it. At least not for pay. All right. So the plaintiff text message and emailed the defendant with questions related to overbilling, double billing, and getting a refund. The defendant claimed several times that he was amendable to this. So he was okay with some of this. Defendant was asked not to return to the property. On June 17th, given that it had been two months since the plaintiff's final payment, it was clear there were billing issues and the defendant had shown his inability to perform the work he had been hired for. However, on the morning of June 19th, defendant showed up at the plaintiff's property at 6.50 a.m. and entered the horse facility through their driveway. There are several workers on the grounds who asked what the defendant was doing, and he stated that he was looking for Laura. All right. So he is looking for her. And then this exhibit shows, you know, construction license number and then uh, his company name and Maricopa, Arizona. And then it gives the date that his license was first issued. And I guess maybe when it expires or it's good through. So first issued is one thing like with my massage therapy license it's gonna say first issued way 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 back when but then it's gonna say you know it's this date was when I last renewed it my renewal date and then it is also probably going to show the expiration date um, because you can have a first issued, but if you didn't renew it, it's not going to have that renewed by or renewed through and still show a date. So in order to keep it current, it's going to have my first issued, but it's going to show whether I renewed it or not because you have to renew it usually because you need to do some continuing edu you have to do continuing education classes and that goes for like construction license plumbing license electrician you have to do ces usually for your license um, cosmetology nursing like all these types of certifications and licenses you usually have to do ces on top of it and then um guess this is 
92 maybe is like a resume or something or what he does. Um, oh, no, it's license certification requirements. So everything that you need to have to to have a license. So she's just saying, hey, look, but he did not start the work before February 12th. So what do we do with that? Is that a is that a moot point? The workers instructed the defendant to leave the property, but they did not comply or he did not comply and instead left the horse facility to ring the doorbell at the plaintiff's residence. See Exhibit 93. Defendant claimed he wanted to discuss the invoice with plaintiff in person, despite being told repeatedly to communicate only in writing. A police report for trespassing was filed with the Scottsdale Police Station. Of course it was. Because she uh, has them on speed dial. The plaintiff emailed the defendant right after this unwelcome visit that day and explained exactly what needed to be repaid. See exhibits 94 and 95. On June 21st, the plaintiff sent the defendant an album of images on iCloud to show him how dangerous and unacceptable his work was. In response, the defendant explained that he would pay back the full amount of money that the plaintiff had paid him, which was $33,447.57. See exhibits 96, 97, and 103. On June 22nd, the defendant said that he did not have funds available to pay the plaintiff in full, but claimed that he had $16,723.78 available immediately and that he had applied for a loan. Okay. So let's see if he said that. So we have on June 19th, 2021, a voicemail. Um, and oh my gosh, do I love the fact that it turns to text and I don't actually have to listen to the voicemail. Um, I can just see who it was who called and then if I need to listen to it. But I can also be like, uh, yeah, not a message I need. And I don't have to sit there and listen to people talk. So I'm just saying I love it. All right. So at 7.14 a.m., he calls her and leaves a voicemail. and says, hey, good morning, Laura. I didn't get a chance to see you this morning. Talk to the guys in the back. I'll talk to your mother. And went to the door, spoke with your mother for a few minutes. And so we had to pick up the tractor and return it. And then um, I asked her in the next couple of days or whatever, if you wanted to, we need to all sit down and then come up with the resolution. I did get your email. Um, and then we'll, we'll figure out as far as the money goes. And then if you could just give me a call, thanks. Bye. Okay. So he had a reason to be there. Uh, that day to to pick up the tractor so it wasn't just to talk to you but all right three hundred and thirty six voicemails how does that number not drive you insane check your voicemails or at least delete the ones you don't need anymore oh my god that would oh that would drive me so crazy I could not have that number sitting there. All right. Here is the email that she sent. It is a little hard to read, but we're going to do our best. And I'm going to read it to you since it might be hard for you to read. So the subject is payment dispute resolution. It was sent on Saturday, June 19th, 2021 at 2.05 p.m from Laura to Sean. Hi, Sean. It was extremely inappropriate for you to ring the doorbell unannounced at 7 a.m. on a Saturday at my parents' house when I had been very clear that all communication was to be in writing. At this point, we will not be meeting in person unless a lawyer is present. As I have talked to you many times, please stop calling me 
and contact me in writing. There were several rules that were not followed according to the Arizona Register of Contractors. First of all, I was not given a copy of the contract, even though I repeatedly asked to view one by email before signing so that I had time to go over it. I was presented with the one day that construction started. Even though I do not have it, I know that the one I signed never included a date of completion. Okay. So there was, you signed that it wouldn't be completed on any certain date. According to the ARS 32.11.54.2b and Rule 49.108, disregard for building codes are grounds for supervision, uh, suspension of a license. The quote originally presented to me was for unpermitted structures. When I asked you in December if I needed to get permits, you said no. Therefore, you quoted me an, impermanent, an unpermitted project and raised the price significantly for a permitted one. Next, according to ARS 32, 11, 54, 15, and 16, you falsely told me that you had experience installing true text footing, arena clean, and stable comfort mats. When you told me about your previous work with those products, I knew you were the person for the job and hired you, since no one else I had contacted had worked with them before. Well, you said that he was the only one that contacted you about this. So who else did you talk to? However, I was misled about your experience and none of them were installed correctly. In fact, the rep for stump, ugh, sorry, Stable Comfort said that the job you did on the mats was the worst he had seen in 20 years of being a North American dealer. You never spoke to him when they were first installed, even though I repeatedly asked you to. When I gave you a second chance, he was extremely specific with you about needing to speak to him and send photos as you installed the mats for a second time. However, you did not call him once as you were not there for the installation and had your crew try to install the mats on their own even though they had not viewed the instructions and did not have experience with them. That does not sound great. Um, and he was given a second chance and he still didn't do it right or his crew didn't do it right once and he didn't do it right once. Still not okay, if this is true. I paid you the remainder of the 34,508 weeks before the project was done, even though it never really was. When in reality, the last charge was supposed to be paid at the completion of work after we had walked the project. The Arizona Registrar of Contractors states that payments are not supposed to go ahead of work when they clearly did as you were nowhere near completion of the job when you asked for the final check on May 7th, 2021. There are construction warranties in Arizona 3.9, which states that a licensed contractor's work is under warranty for at least two years. The foundation of the stalls would reportedly done twice and will need to be repeated by an independent party. So that was done two times. The Delmar fencing, okay, so Delmar is fencing, already broke due to the shoddy work done by your crew in welding on it. One of your crew members admitted to being very new to welding, also told me that the previous foreman had been fired to mistakes he had made which included some on my property. You were rarely around to oversee their work and their errors were overlooked. I have several scars on 
my arm from the sharp edges left of the delmar and my horses continue to get serious cuts from the metal left sharpening in many places my horse and stall four could have had a catastrophic catastrophic injury from kicking through the delmar which i thought was impossible to do based on your recommendation of it i have had construction workers look at the work and effort to figure out how that happened and they showed me that the welding was not properly done which caused the fencing to be weak in places the work related to each of these issues should have been covered under warranty in other words if you screwed it up for at least two years you need to come out and fix it according to contract law i guess my sales business suffered as a result of this extremely long process which i told you many times it relies on the horses staying fit and i was unable to ride the ones that i had for months let alone bringing bringing in new investments because the stalls were not complete i do not know the monetary amount that this cost me but it was certainly tons of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars generally estimates should not go over 10 to 20 percent and that is only if there's a substantial amount of work or materials that were unexpected like the cost of supplies due to pandemic or shipping fees and stuff it's unbelievable that the price went from 16,789 to the final cost of 34,508 uh which it started at 7,000 so it went from 7,000 to 16,000 to 34,000 when a significant amount was of work quoted in the first estimate was not included in the second as a licensed contractor it was your obligation to present me with written charge orders to modify for the materials not covered and that could not have been anticipated when the original work was bid again as a licensed contract contractor you should have quoted me for the project that would be legal which you claimed would have been around 18,000 more which is I repeatedly asked you for an itemized invoice for the price jump and was given wasn't ever given one with all of that being said I realized that I miscalculated a few of the costs the quote for the six stalls originally was 16,340 including the 10 foot porch and five real design with 7,000 off for the 10 foot porch it would have taken it down to 9,340 for the six which equals fifteen fifty seven per stall and a total of seventy seven eighty three for five I was comfortable paying seventy seven eighty three or the eighty five so that's how she's saying it was that which to build the stalls that part might have been the seven thousand but then you add in the arena clean and you add in the comfort mats and you add in um the welding and the true techs and all of those which are not a part of building the structures itself because i can see it costing seven thousand just for the stalls alone and that's with nothing else done it's just build the structure and then maybe you went and did the rest of the work i could see that being seven thousand but for everything he was supposed to do there's no way that that was going to be seven thousand dollars i just can't buy that part 
that's why I think there was a disconnect somewhere in what she was wanting and what he was thinking she was wanting. And then once he realized she was wanting more, the price went up. Now, I don't know if it should have been that high or what, but this is what it says. When the price went up for the permitted structures, the price went to 26317 which equates 4386 per stall. For five stalls, that would have been 21000 and some odd hundred. So she's saying it just shouldn't be that. I mean, knocking off ten thousand dollars, you know, that I mean that's a big difference in price. If it could have been in the twenty thousands instead of the thirty thousands, um, so did he overcharge? These are questions we are going to want answered. The difference between what I was originally quoted for, which was non-permitted stalls, stalls, and then the permitted st stalls. So it's going to cost you more if you have to get a permit too. I guess you got to pay those permit fees. I, I don't know that a permit is going to, I don't know how much a permit is for this, these things. I don't, I can see you putting in that permit price on there, but I don't know how much that would actually raise the cost of the stalls. I don't know how much it would do. The five rail was more expensive at 115 per 20 panel. something in late February, although I know that the material costs were lower, even you brought them in in January, that price is fine. By my calculations, we used 25. That would be 26.75. The four rail was less expensive in $97 per 20 foot panel. If we use 25, that would be 2845. Okay. We need to subtract the $400 based on Bonanza pipe and steel pricing for the five rail fencing on the stalls that I paid for and were not used. So if they didn't use them, there's that thing. I am unaware of the price difference with the five foot versus the four foot gates. So I will let that go. It's going to cost me 2000 to hire a welder to fix the place where the hoof was caught in the Del Mar and had to change the four foot fencing to five foot fencing between the stalls as the height difference was caused caused a dangerous situation. Again, you had told me you were going to do five foot fencing originally. And when you didn't, I gave you weeks to fix the problem over and over again. I told you that my horses were attacking each other because the fences were too low. So I guess one extra foot was going to change that. My written request went unanswered, yet my in-person interactions with you make me believe that you would fix the issue. On your last visit, you told me that you had no idea for how to fix problem that you had created, when in my mind, it would have been simple. Change the fencing from four feet to five feet, as promised. Can't you just take that fencing down and put the other one up? I don't, I mean, that may be too simple. I am not a contractor. I realize that I've already paid more than 55 
or 6,500 to four workers over the past several weeks to correct major mistakes that were made with the foundation to complete the work that you said you would have done. However, we'll only ask for 3,500. I spent more than 3,000 to rush the stable comfort mats, the true text footing, the quick feeders, and the arena clean because you said it was only going to take you four days and for guys to complete the project and that you needed the materials quickly. So she's stating that is why she ordered everything so quick and because it took months instead of days, that's why some of these materials were unusable when it came down to it. Obviously, that wasn't the case. I am not asking for reimbursement for that. In addition, I am not asking for reimbursement for the 1500 plus paid on these horses to board them when I first moved to town and you had told me that the stalls would be ready, but they weren't. Okay, so there were horses on this property previously. And then Laura was moving to Arizona during this time period, I guess. And so she wanted this all to be done right about the time she was moving and she was going to want it done quick. The work that you completed was potentially very dangerous and you even admitted so with the foundation, which was crumbling when you first said it was completed and now is crumbling even more. I am rushing to try to get this work done before monsoon season in an effort to make it safe for my animals. I have had several other professionals in your industry evaluate your work and they were they will completely back me up about its likeliness for a disaster if need be. With all that being said, the amount that I was will settle for is $33,447.57. And then she calculates the $13,000 and a $14,000 and a $5,000, almost $6,000 thing. My out-of-pocket expenses to fix your work have been significantly more than that and will continue to pile up but I will pay for several thousands of those myself in an effort to resolve this quickly. I have documentation to back up every penny of that amount. Several state rules were not followed and you should pay me the 33,000. I will not file a complaint with the Arizona Registrar of Contractors, even though most people in my position would. Well, maybe you won't, but I'm sure Jan will. I will agree to, I will not agree to less, nor will I have conversation in person without an attorney present, especially after you showed up this morning without any warning and attempt to catch my mother off guard and dust and deal with her verbally rather than with me in writing as you were asked to do. Okay, so Jan is more of a pushover with this stuff, and Owens is like, absolutely not, I'm the boss. I am very disappointed and sad about how this turned out. I had come to consider you a friend no you did not you treat him you just bark at him so it is hurtful that you intentionally or something overcharged me when you knew this was a huge outlay of expenses for me in the first place 
Well, this is a business deal. He's not your friend. So he owes you nothing. He can be nice to you. That doesn't make you friends. You you weren't friends. This was a business dealing. He owes just he owes you nothing. Stop thinking people owe you things. I feel like my kindness and that my total trust in you was mistaken for naive. I gave you countless chances to fix the work and do it properly and in the times you had estimated. Yet my calls and voicemails were left unanswered the vast majority of time. How would you know when you have like 300 voicemails you haven't listened to and 400 some odd texts you haven't looked at? How do you know? I was endlessly patient with this multi-day project turning into multi-months because I trusted that in the end, the facility would be perfectly constructed. And I can understand her point on that. You know, if everything would have turned out like as it should have been, then, you know, you, you could just, you could overlook the fact that it took months instead of days if it turned out just amazing and beyond your dreams, you know? So I, I get her point there. I truly thought that you were a man of integrity and you have proved me wrong. I hope that in the future you don't exploit your clients and that you reevaluate how your actions affected those who have put their total trust in you just like I did. Sincerely, Laura Owens. Well, she did not wish him all the best. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, long emails. We know she likes to write long emails. Uh, she makes some valid points in it. But at this point in this case that we're looking at, kind of like when you look at a criminal trial, you should be pretty much siding with the person telling you their story. You shouldn't have questions. There shouldn't be holes. Like you should be fully on their side when they're telling their side and be like, oh my God. Cause you know, even if you listen to your friend's stories, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, my boyfriend did this and this and this. And you're like, oh my God, he's awful. And then you hear the boyfriend's side and you're like, well, no wonder you did that. Like, but right now, we're only hearing her side. So we really should be on her side and believing this case. Or you should really be on the state's side when you're in a criminal suit or whatever. You should be believing that. And then it's not until we get to hear the other side that we need to decide, is he right or is she wrong? Or is she right and he's wrong? So right now... I'm all I can do is take her at her word that this is how it happened. She has lots of receipts on this one. Um, this is probably the most receipts I've seen her bring in any of the cases we've seen so far because the other ones didn't show. But let's continue. So she sends another email on Monday, June 21st, 2021. At 11.32 a.m. and says, Hi, Sean. Attached is a link to show photos and videos taken of the property mostly this weekend. As you can see, two of the four horses have severely cut their necks as a result of the sharp edges left on the Delmar. Photos are from June 20th. The welding of the Delmar to the pipes was extremely sloppy with the fencing being out in places and no repairs done to fix it. The material has become misshapen in several areas as a result of the welding done quickly rather than carefully and many loose spots between fencing. And the stable comfort mats are already uneven and not properly attached. The welders also cut the screws where the electrical was attached, which we were told could be a disaster if not fixed immediately. 
Next, with the heat, the foundation is eroding away, leaving dangerous gaps, and we discovered that there is nothing solid holding up the stalls. The crumbs are coming out of again. again. The concern is that with the rain and the heat, a horse's hoof could sink down and we would have a major issue. We already have a major issue with the Del Mar with one of our horses getting their hoofs caught. Thousands of dollars that I did not list in my previous email are anticipated repairs, these things, and they need to be done ASAP because of the massive consequences that they could have. The work that was done was unacceptable and while we certainly could pursue action for damages, we would prefer to settle, settle it in between us. As I said, I have proof of everything that was done incorrectly, surveillance footage and receipts of my out-of-pocket expenses, which she does, and she has laid that out very nicely for us. Um, and she tried to work with him first before she filed a lawsuit instead of just going straight to lawsuit. I can certainly ask for more as my costs are increasing by the day. Please respond by the end of the day with your intended course of action. And then she shares the iCloud photos and is sincerely Laura Owens. When did she start using all the best? Hmm. Interesting. So Sean responds and says, good afternoon. Sorry, I have been super busy with my daughter's doctor medical treatments for these past few weeks. So this is where he said that he had kids and that they were sick. So just like Owens's dad was sick. He says, I agree to repay amount stated in previous email from last week which total amount stated is 33,000. My again my apologies on all this heartache and delay. So there it is. There it is. He has said in black and white that he is willing and he agrees to repay the total amount that he charged for this project. So basically, he did this project for free now. And it was done shitty. And so Laura says, Hi, when can I expect to receive this? As I mentioned, my cost related to this project seem to be rising astronomically by the day. So I want to deal with this and move on. You can have a courier drop off a cashier's check for blank or drop one off in the mailbox and text when it's there. Please do not come to the door. Thank you, Laura. So very interesting. Before we look into what goes next, now he did have to buy certain things with this money and he had to pay his crew workers. So a lot of that money should be used up. So it might take him some time to get that money back from doing other jobs in order to repay the full amount. Like, he could have set up a payment plan with her. He could just pay it in full. He could pay half now and then, you know, whatever. But I, because he's a new contractor and such, he's not a big business. They don't just have that money just hanging around. Small businesses don't usually have that kind of money. Um, they, you know, it's going to be a... A little bit before he can pay it back so she can't expect to be like well 
how have you spent all the money? Well, we still had to buy and pay people, buy things and pay for people. So let's see what else he says. Sean says on June 22nd, good evening. I currently do not have the total amount of funds to repay entire agreed on amount, the 33,000 in one payment. I have talked to my bank today and I'm currently waiting 24 to 48 hours to receive a decision for a loan in the amount I am deficient in. I currently had unexpected bills arise in the last few weeks with hospital bills that my insurance couldn't wouldn't cover prior to our agreement. Regardless, I currently have enough for half of that amount, which is the $16,723.78, and we'll have more funds available in the coming weeks. I am really eager as well to resolve this issue and offering complete transparency to resolving this as quick as possible. Thanks, Sean. Okay, so he's working with her. You know, whether it was spent on bills or whatever, it, it I mean, he doesn't even really need, he doesn't have to explain what he had to use the money for necessarily. Um, but yeah. So she responds and says, hello, this needs to be resolved as soon as possible, or I am very prepared to take further action between the quality of work, surveillance and injuries to my horses. I would be well within my rights to. I am trying to be kind, but this project and its aftermath have last, lasted more than six months, not four days. Please let me know as soon as possible. Lars, Laura, and that was sent from her iPhone. Okay, like, I get her frustration, but he's trying, and that's a pretty big sum of money still. Um, I know you're out another 16000 even if he pays that right now, but, like, he's trying to make it right. Let's see how long she gives him to make it right, okay? So we're in June, June 20th, or mid-June, when he's trying to make it right. So let's see what else happens. Uh, here's a text message that says, yes, hi, please check your email. Just read and responded. Owen says, please take care of the first payment and we need to look at a date for the second payment. I desire this to be resolved as soon as possible. I had really stretched to pay your bills and am now on the hook for so many more and in a rush to fix things before the monsoons. Sean says, thank you so much for understanding. I have been, I have literally been in tears with the stress. I have never been in this situation like this in all the years in business and dealing with my daughter's recently diagnosed thyroid cancer. Radiation treatments has really been a tough month. And I don't know if he was in tears about it, but if what he has going on in his life is true, that sucks. All right. So that is June 22nd. Now we're moving to December 11th, 2021. It says he never mentioned having kids or any family being hospitalized, but talked about his wife and puppy. I think he lied. June 17th, he told you this his daughter was hospitalized, and on June 21st, he told me he had been in Hawaii for two weeks. I don't know who she's talking to there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he didn't spend it on a vacation, but who knows? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter as long as he's going to pay it back, but this is six months and Okay, I don't know that why that December one was just put in here randomly like that, but I guess it was just to show that nobody knew about his kids and now he has kids. So we're continuing on in June. Um, 
Wednesday, June 23rd, so like a day later. Hi, I need to know what the bank has said. As I said, your actions and those of your crew have made me very unwilling to accept anything other than a full payment at this point. There's a problem right there. Did you know that a company could get in trouble and maybe not be allowed to put it on your credit if you have offered partial payments, even if it's $5? Five dollars a month or those bill collectors call and you're like well I could pay five dollars and they're like no they actually have to accept it because you are trying to work with them and you're turning down them trying to work with you to pay off a debt so her saying no I don't want to I don't want to take a partial amount. Take the partial amount. Always take what you can. Because maybe the next time that you they can give you something, maybe that partial amount's not even there. And that way you know you at least got half of it back. You didn't get the full amount back. You can fight about that later. But she at least would get half of the amount back, which is better than nothing. Sean says, okay, as soon as I find out, I'll message you right away. So a few hours later, Owen says, I need to have the answer. This has been dragging on and I've been scrambling to get stuff done before the rain. I was very unprepared today and the foundation was basically washing away. I had to scramble to pay you more than twice what you told me to budget and now you have the money for your services not provided and I'm left trying to make ends meet to make this happen. This is not okay. Like, okay, we get it. But you're, you just keep repeating yourself right now. You know, you could have just said, well, you know, I really, really need to know. But Maybe don't text a few hours later. Maybe text the next day. I don't know. Which she does text the next day too. But all right. Sean says, left bank at five. Loan was approved. I'm meeting with the banker tomorrow morning at approximately 9.30 a.m. to find out when funds are to be available. We'll send you a message shortly after that. Okay. The next day. At 7.20 p.m. So it has been a whole day. He was supposed to meet with them at 9.30 a.m. She's texting him at 7.20 p.m. I am not waiting past the deadline tomorrow for funds to settle or any de other delay. It has been an excuse after excuse with you. You have lied to me more times than you've told me the truth. Well, you would know how that was, right? I would be a fool to believe your story about the bank when the funds will be available. So you can understand when you've been lied to that people would be, you would be a fool to believe somebody who has lied to you. But when you've lied, we should not be a fool. Like we would be a fool to believe you since you've lied, but you don't see it that way. Okay. My funds were not easily available when you illegally asked for them before work was completed, but I gave them to you, trusting that the work would be completed that day. Well, you were naive in that. I'll give you that. You were naive. You should not have paid until the job is done. I would have said, no, I'm not paying until the work is finished. As I said, I have surveillance from when you guys were here. And I been something overcharged, so I'm not going to write it out for you. The blank team can be honest and give them back. Sean says, I will message you as soon as I found out tomorrow morning. I offered a portion that I had immediately, and it was denied. I don't know what else to tell you till I found out 
indefinitely tomorrow. Exactly. He offered to pay you some so that you would maybe quit bitching and complaining. You said, no, I don't want a partial payment. Okay, well, you could have 16000 in your bank right now. And maybe it wouldn't be so like in a rush to need this money when you could at least have half of it in your bank account right now and then be waiting for him to get the other 16000 from this loan. So this is you just being extra. I, You should have taken it. She says, this definitely doesn't seem to be a priority to you. I don't know how you can live with yourself for lying and taking from my family when we trusted you. I am thinking more and more about filing charges for what you guys took, and I am going to trust that for once you can do the right thing here and bring the stuff back to my driveway. Sean says, I agreed to pay agreed amount. I am waiting for the bank to issue funds. That I'll know a set date for tomorrow morning. All right. Still 489 messages unread. So we're now on to Friday, the next day after he said that. Today he was meeting with the bank to find out about the funds. Good morning, Sean says. I just finished having a long talk with the loan manager and he said funding will be available in three to five business days. Once I receive that, that day, we'll make a cashier's check available in a great amount. I have, I full and have it delivered to your residence if you agree to that. So a fair date with the information I've just been given end of day Thursday of next week. July 1st, 2021 would be the latest it would be for you to receive a payment in full if agree to this. This is what was told to me and I even asked if there was a way to expedite the process and they repeatedly informed me it was beyond their command and it's the process. Okay, I would have got this in writing and sent this to her so that I had proof that, hey, this is what the bank told me. Um, she says, what is the payment you will give? Sean says, I got the message at 3.30. How was I supposed to drive from Casa Grande to Phoenix, go back to get the cashier's check, find third party to deliver check, and have it done, have it to you before 5? You knew this long before 3.30, Owen says. I can't take any more. All this needs to be done in one check on an agreement in writing of some kind. I have to see what a settlement agreement is on or before Thursday, 1 p.m., July 1st, 2021. You can't take this anymore? Seriously? You committed multiple crimes here. Oh, good Lord. She's law enforcement now. Agreed to the amount in writing. You have the audacity to ask me to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which is typically used in the workplace. There is many reasons to use a non-disclosure agreement. He knows that you are going to ruin his business, which I'm sure you did. He just would like you not to go out and talk about this because he did the job, he paid you back, you know, admitted to wrongdoing, and he just wants to wash his hands of you. So, yeah. You offered to bring half of the money, and you have reneged on that and come up with your own something. Uh, you said you didn't want half the money, miss. You denied his half payment. You could have his half payment. You said, no, I want the full amount. This is where she starts to make me crazy. Okay, let's go back to the motion. He was going to pay the amount he was deficient. Defendant claimed that he had a daughter who was recently diagnosed with thyroid cancer and was receiving radiation and asked for an extension to pay until July 1st. 
eventually he asked for that, yes, after offering you to pay certain things. The plaintiff is now aware that the defendant does not have a daughter with thyroid cancer and that he had made this up to delay payment. The defendant had told another client who was dissatisfied with his work that he was unable to respond to her messages because he had been in Hawaii for two weeks. See Exhibit 100, which we already looked at. When in reality, plaintiff was in Arizona as he had seen the plaintiff during that time period. Plaintiff gave defendant a deadline of 5 p.m. on June 25th to refund. Yeah, Owen said, nope, you owe it to me by the 25th. He said, you know, the banks and everything, I will get it to you by in five days from that, basically, or six days, not even a full week. The defendant claimed he had issues obtaining the loan initially, but said that he, he had been approved on June 25th. He was asked to have a third party bring the funds that he had available to the plaintiff immediately, but claimed it was too late in the day to do so exhibits 101 through 105 which we just looked at defendant was advised that fees would continue to mount over the weekend and the plaintiff would investigate his work to determine if further if further charges would be incurred defendant failed to acknowledge this communication well maybe he didn't want to acknowledge you anymore on June 28th, plaintiff made another payment request with the additional fees and discovered damages now amounted to 44000 See exhibits 106 to 109. This new amount included the materials the defendant said that he needed and the plaintiff had to pay out of pocket. It should be noted that this does not include replacement prices that the plaintiff will need to pay for new stable comfort mats, arena clean, quick fix, Speed and true tax, which have gone up in price now and amount to more than 40,000. So the thing is, is if you are not, let's, okay. If you are getting your $34,000 back, That puts you back at zero that you have spent on these stalls. Okay. So once you get that money back, you're not out of pocket that extra money. You are just going to be out of pocket that 10 extra, that $10,000 that you accrued. So you've only spent $10,000 for that extra stuff. And then maybe some other four. But you can't say you've spent 44000 when you got the 34000 back, if that makes sense. So she's not out of that money out of pocket anymore once she gets the money back. So she would be starting back at zero for this project. Defendant has ignored all of plaintiff's requests for updates with respect to payment as well as demands to see the contract since July 1st. Multiple requests for defendant's insurance company's information were also unanswered. See exhibits 110 and 111, even though the defendant had advertised on Facebook that his business, and we'll continue that in a minute. So it says to be paid by July 1st. 1250 for the demo, 1700 for the mat installation plus baseboard proposed by you, 1300 for baseboards purchased by me. Since the original baseboards you purchased, which was in the invoice, were the incorrect size. Uh, $1,112. For boarding for three horses for May 16th through May 23rd at Smoke Tree Ranch, while the incorrectly installed mats needed to be redone. 300 for the sprinkler, credit for the six stall, 400 for the two techs, and stable, clean footing, properly mixed and evenly distributed after you said there was nothing you could do to fix it. 
288 for the price of for 16 for rail panels 1552 total versus 1840 pricing paid for 16 five rail panels as invoice pricing based on banana steel's pricing costs for February 27th 2021 288 for the pricing of 16 rail panels oh we already read that one okay $1,668 for the overpayment of fencing should be paid at $1,504 quote per square foot quoted initially, then hours listed at $1,980 for 80 square foot fencing rather than the $145 that was paid for. $1,706 for partial completion of wash rack proposed by you. $1,674.67 for the cost for temporary fencing that needed to be installed to account for the huge inclines and rocks into the arena that were never anticipated. You said you would just fix it yourself, but that did not happen. $1,376 for fencing paid to uh, somebody on May 28th and $297.82. 2000 for the cost of materials needed outside the labor hired to establish a safe base for the barn. Since foundation is the most important thing for the building, it is understandable that we did not want your crew to try again to install for a third time. I don't blame her because uh, the foundation was not great. 14148 to count to the difference Install pricing as mentioned above and needs to be outlined in writing ASAP. 1600 for two barrels of arena clean. The arena clean that was used was installed without contacting somebody of variety supply for instructions. And we know that the black barrels that Mr. Blank was directed to use were taken off the property unused as per witness and surveillance. $75 for the caps not placed on the beams. $366.86 for fencing railing padding needed to prevent further injury to the horses due to Del Mar material softness. $5,000 for estimated cost of materials and labor to replace the already damaged 4-foot Del Mar and pipe to 5-foot cover a total of 300 by 100 feet as was agreed upon. $17,000. 50 for board paid on three horses in Thermal, California from the 21st of February to the Mar March 1st in Scottsdale at a private residence on March 1st through the 9th after you said they were clear to arrive. 1463 paid to blank for sand and dirt on April 20th to fix the incorrectly installed stable comfort match which were improperly installed by and costs associated with fixing them should be not put, not be put on us. In addition, that was charged 11 days after you charged the final payment. And she continues on. $778 for wood surrounding the arena to hold in the footing that was never installed despite being suggested by Mr. Blank and being shown in photos on the invoices. 1200 estimate to have a criminal electrician repair conduit cut for and broken one by your crew. What, really? You need to put criminal electrician? Jesus. 2300 for this past weekend's June 26th through the 27th cost of materials and labor needed to add cinder blocks and cement to the Barnes Foundation because even the explicit instructions for materials of the stable comfort mats, concrete, gravel, or crushed limestone were not used. The base was not dug up and the mats were out on top of a thin layer of dirt. As you can see, the crumbs are again coming out because of this error. The foundationally throughout the barn has eroded and I have had to quickly figure out how to secure it. I chose cinder blocks and cement and the labor has been extremely expensive. The foundation did not do well in the monsoon like weather on Wednesday. 
so more drastic repairs will need to be done. 1350 for the cost of rocks placed in front of the barn to prevent flooding due to the large amount of dirt added. The angle has been reviewed by several industry professions who do not agree with what you explained was leveling. Since we are on the brink of a monsoon season that is predicted to be bad, we have been forced to take precaution and had multiple workers here at any um, at any given time to make the barn safe. All right. So she's laid out all her, all of her costs. All right. Thoroughly documented. And she's got the receipts to back up those things that are written. Because it's not just taking her at her word. Alright. I wish this text had a date on it. But it says, I have filed a very lengthy and detailed complaint with the Registrar of Contractors. You have until 6pm to approve payment. Or this is going to litigation and will certainly cost you much more. What is the name of your insurance company? Sean says, I currently don't have $44,000 to pay at the moment. Laura says, you can do two payments. He said, they would have to be spaced out and get our payments in writing. Contract agreement of some sort. Did you file the complaint with the Arizona ROC already? If so, then we would have to wait and let them do their investigation. She says, yep, I did. You did not respond. After she told him she wasn't going to do that. She was going to do that the whole entire time. She was just making threats. And they weren't threats. She was just saying, oh, I'm not going to do it if you pay me. But if you don't, you know, I could and I'm in my rights. She says, yes, and I do think the inspection will go well considering the circumstances. I need the contract and your insurance information. Okay, the investigator will probably contact me in a few soon, I suppose, and then from here we should be able to set resolution if willing, is what Sean says. Laura again says, I need the contract and your insurance information. And then she says, question mark, they are going to ask you the same question. So, okay, so this is in July. So I don't know why he hasn't paid, because we're past July 1st. I don't know why he hasn't paid the 34000 that he should have paid by now. Um, she says, I would like to review it before I talk with them. Um, then she like sends a text. This is our screenshot of a text. Absolutely correct to tell you. Then his welds are probably not done well either. I would not trust the integrity of anything that guy did. Interesting. And then this is something. I don't know where this is off of. Maybe Facebook? Uh, it says, we would love to give you an estimate. License bond insured. Best you can get. They did fantastic work for us. I can give you a quote. I build all fence and custom fence okay so at this point that was a year ago when she saw this and a year ago he wasn't licensed and bond unless he was working under somebody else but he's the owner so yeah no all right uh now I'm just talking about, you know, was insured. See Exhibit 112. The Registrar of Contractors was contacted and a complaint was filed on July 7th that was never 
responded to by defendants. See exhibits 113 to 120. Plaintiff was informed by blank an investigator that the ROC would not be the best route to go in order to get a reimbursement in this particular situation. He explained that the ROC can only get contractors to fix or complete work, not reimburse for poor work. And he doesn't want to do anything with this lady. Apparently, he don't want to pay her either. He don't want to pay her back. The defendant has already given ample opportunity to fix his work and did not do so and intimidated the plaintiff by trespassing. He did not intimidate you. That's a lie right there. Like, that's the problem. You don't need to exaggerate something to make it worse than it already is if it's bad. If it's bad, it's bad. You don't need to add more context to it. That's where you start to look not good. If he did shitty work, he did shitty work. But don't say you were intimidated by him. Therefore, the plaintiff did not want the defendant to return. The defendant did not file a written response to the plaintiff's complaint. Okay. Um... And then here is the page of her license complaint form. And she is the complaining person, the person she's complaining against is Sean and Lone Cactus Construction for the $34,000 for poor work. Um... And so it, it was a residential thing. You contacted the thing by phone and email. And at this point, it's, you know, it says, have you filed a complaint in the court? She's, it says no here. Has any of the work been corrected? She says no. I don't know what the other ones. And so uh, she talks about attempting to retrain a wall unsuccessfully, unsafely put up, learned that his work was likely poor because he is not registered to do that. After two attempts, I did not want him to come and finish this project as he had told me repeatedly that the truck was coming with the materials any minute any time and it never came the work was so poorly done that I did not want him to do it again I asked him for a copy of the contract to view when I first contacted him in December 2020 and agreed to do the project with him I asked him many many times afterwards probably 20 he finally brought it on the 8th but she didn't get a copy of it she just signed it then um after the equipment had been delivered and told me he needed me to sign it real quick and he could get so he could get to work, I did. He ensured me that, you know, he would get a copy when he got home. So this is the start of her complaint. And she's going to lay everything out. So this is her just laying out everything that we've gone over basically in this filing um, if you want to pause it and reread it, even though we've gone over this extensively, you are more than welcome to. And, and stuff like that. This is her continuing. Looks like she basically copied and pasted this from the other thing into this complaint. Um... So deadline, we've attached documents explaining the amount we need to settle. Payments must be made and delivered by a third party in the amount of 44000 As soon as you agree, we'll arrange for a courier. Sean came up with excuses. Um, 
for difficulty of paying late work for money he literally stole from us in this case it was his daughter having thyroid cancer that's what he told me told my mom he had multiple kids in the hospital there's no proof that sean even has children well that's not really any of your business whether he does or doesn't that's his personal private life he is a pathological liar and a smooth talker mm, sounds like somebody else except for you're not a smooth talker Mm -mm -mm. countless text warnings sean the consequences were sent and he assured me he wanted to resolve this quickly and he was extremely easy to work with after the settlement amount of 33,000 was agreed to by sean he announced that he needed a non-disclosure agreement signed this was absolutely ludicrous as he knew i had already spoken to two people who were interested in his work about his quality i would never recommend him in the future in fact that he decided that he needed this at all speaks to the lack of pride he took in his work yeah maybe so uh payment was given way before the project was completed as demanded um on april 27th after the payment was given the work still did not get done by the time we told him to stop may 31st so as of may 31st they were done kicked him off the property told him you know we're just done with you as a contractor Several huge charges were incurred for materials after the last payment was given. I have proof of this. Also, the price increased from what the last payment was supposed to be the final amount. On several occasions, material that Sean asked me to order were never picked up, despite him telling me that they were. I was called by Lowe's and Tractor Supply repeatedly about whether I would ever pick up the items I had ordered. I put both companies on hold for two weeks until they would no longer hold them any longer and then she signs under declaration penalty of perjury all right so now we have uh, the ROC says good morning I was in the field yesterday and just reading your emails he did not supply a written response there isn't one in the file anyways thank you so that was the ROC people the record of complaint office i guess that were telling owens that he didn't respond and so we end with this this is the picture of what it was supposed to look like and did not come to be at least not with sean so that is it for her motion for summary judgment and we will get into the next document in this case next time. So turn those notification bells on after you subscribe so that you will be notified when the next video in this case review comes out. Share and we are on our way to 700 and hopefully 1,000 at least at one point. So I will see you guys next time.